this is the final part of our podcast series where we're sitting down with legendary Hall of Fame football coach Larry Karras as he shares with us his experience with the integration of behavioral science principles into coaching practices. Enjoy this last segment and thanks for joining us on this journey. Well, I, I think what I want to get across to young coaches is the problem may seem insurmountable, but they're really not. Uh, you can't let the problems like Joe doesn't want to play football anymore. Mm-hmm. Gets you down because that, that worried me, you know, as a 23 year old, the best guy on the team won't come, supposed to be the best guy on the team. He won't come to anything. OK, but I just convinced myself maybe he's the reason why these kids, kids can't, can't win any games because he's OK. He, he won't, won't. He won't. He won't. You know, know. And, and the, the guy that played quarterback for me. Huh. <laughs> right. You see how successful he is in life. But, but um, OK, so I have a great eye to that. We're, we're on effort and yep. and. Uh, you're on number two on the efforts. It was uh, what if an outstanding player does not demonstrate appropriate effort? Uh oh, that's look out. You know, on a athletic team's got that issue. That's I mean, we kind of had, you know, a conversation about that. Tell them what you told me about that. Well, I I said that. Effort. You, you have, have to, to define, define what effort, effort is. What, what it's it's observable and measurable. It's a behavior. Right. What what is there that's observable and measurable? Uh, what what do you know? What is it about an attitude? Guys got a bad attitude. Well, what's observable and measurable that you're calling a bad attitude? <clears throat> okay. So if you can define those, then you can set out to change them by using mostly positive reinforcement, right. four and one ratio. Uh, and oftentimes, uh, I mean, young guys would say to me, doesn't make eye contact. Well, some young men have a hard time making eye contact with their college coach. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they might not have a dad at home. <clears throat> they didn't make eye contact very often, except with their mom or grandma. So let's, let, let's not let that be a reason that, to say a guy's got a bad attitude. So I wanted behaviors. What, what is it about this guy? You know, and uh, I always wanted specifics so that we could deal with it. Right. Something we measured. It might use the term videotape proof. Mm-hmm. What is there on videotape about this guy that says he can't be a good linebacker? Uh, but where were we? Um, Go ahead. Get yeah. us rolling. So I think that we were, we're talking about effort, and uh, I think Coach Feline, you had a follow up that you wanted to to get in there. Well, I, I mean, it, it deals with this a little bit, but when um, Coach was talking, you know, he used to put those, you know, his, his players um, was they were always self evaluating. We were talking about that, mm-hmm. but he used to do that to to coaches as well. I remember a time we we're playing for a really big game. It was probably my first couple of years at Mount Union. And he asked me, he said, how's the game plan? You feel good? I go, yeah, I feel pretty good, you know, that we're prepared, mm-hmm. right? We're, we're prepared. We paid attention. You know, if we give great effort, we're going to have a chance. He goes, well, let me ask you something. What can get you beat? And again, it was one of those moments where my whole body went numb. Right? I go, what do you mean? He goes, well, what can get you beat? Like 150 different things, you know, go through my mind that can get us that can get us beat. And that taught me as a coach to this day, like whenever you feel, you know, your team's prepared or you're prepared, you know, what what can can get get you you beat? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it is the lack of discipline on the effort. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, man, if our body language is off or if this guy's not giving great effort, um, that can get us beat. So how do you how do you deal with that? Right. Coach brought up a great point. Well, what if that person is your best is your best guy? Right. You know, that's when things get a little bit, especially for, you know, obviously, you know, it, not coach in his later years, but, you know, maybe not even me right now. Mm-hmm. But in our early years, man, our, my best player. Right. I, I mean, the one story that I had, I was, you know, I look back on it. I had a former Rootstown team here a couple weeks ago, right? Mm-hmm. So I coached them 20 years ago, 20 years, 
you know, and the whole team was here with their little kids and running around. And so um, I remember I got hired I was at, at 26, just turned 27. And the AD said, hey, there's one guy returning. Man, he's kind of tough. He's a tough dude. He's an all-league player. He's really good. Um, but he's tough to get through, you know. And, and I remember going, he was telling me this. And it's the last day of school. I haven't met the team or anything. I'm like, well, what's his name? And his name was Adam. I said, hey, you know, just point him out to me. He was about 6'3", good-looking athlete, but you can tell kind of squirrely, right? And I just remember going up to him and pulling him by his shirt and bringing him into the gym and cornering him. He has no idea who I am. I introduced myself. I'm your next head basketball coach here. I'm Coach Feline. I, I heard you're a really good player, and he just kind of stares at me like nine. And I said, well, you're going to – today's going to be the day. You're going to decide. You're going to be a part of this team or you're not. You're going to be my leader or you're not. You're going to trust me or you're not. Because the second that that happens, we can fast forward instead of me trying to prove a hundred different things to you. So are you going to be in or are you going to be out? And I think I was probably saying some words I shouldn't have probably been saying in there too. And he just was like this – this guy's nuts a little bit, right? And to this day, I don't know what made me do it, but it changed the whole complexion of that summer um, in that fall. Because when your best guys, when they have, when they buy in and they have effort and they believe mm -hmm. that everybody else, you know, I think um, our program in the basketball program, certainly I've seen it in the football player. You either fit in or you kind of fit out. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how that works. Once that internal leadership is is kind of maintained, when it's not there, and now as coaches, you, then you have to become the leader. It's not ideal. Would you agree with me a little yes, bit? Yes, and those are the points that <clears throat> for young coaches that you know might be watching. Uh, you're not at a championship level with your team, and and you have uh, players who's you want to understand the effort that you think is appropriate, then I think you have to define it. Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned that football practice goes like this in terms of an intensity, focus, and effort. So make make clear to your the young people on your team, the student athletes, when uh, heightened effort is absolutely required. You can use words in football. We use active thud, thud, uh, no contact. Uh, we use words to describe what we've defined mm -hmm. to the players as, as appropriate. But I, you'll still have instances, I think, of where, where athletes don't give the effort that you'd like, that you've defined, and you have to do something about it. Right. You have to change that behavior. You have to alter the behavior. And uh, we faced that when I was a young coach at, at Mount Union. And so we used uh, what it, we defined effort. And we said if we have two instances of inappropriate effort, you're going to have to stand on the sideline for five plays. On the sideline didn't work because there's talking to the players that aren't on the field about who knows what. Right. I would imagine the talking was about the coach that sent him to the sideline, who was me. Right. So uh, I switched to you have to stand 20 yards behind the huddle. Okay. That worked. That was a form of social isolation we might say time out you know and i don't know if time out was around in the late 70s but it was a form of time out and it did change the behavior that we thought was inappropriate but i think you seek a way to get the effort you feel that you need to be a successful team and you don't accept less than that uh less than that it, it's like the measles uh it spreads quickly and uh just not acceptable. Now, we're, Mike and I coach college level athletes. We seldom deal with uh, excessive lack of effort, but if we have to deal with it, if we did, and quickly and effectively, and um, cease, make it cease. And uh, perhaps, as I mentioned earlier, a strong negative interaction is necessary to extinguish an undesirable behavior. Uh, when we were talking earlier, and Mike and I about coming in today, I said in second grade I behaved inappropriately on the by fighting on the playground, and I got a strong negative interaction with the principal in nineteen probably fifty six or something. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't behave inappropriately on the playground anymore. Right. Uh, so uh, 
Yeah. But, but effort, effort is, is a word, word that comes up, and I think we need to define it. Let's give it meaning mm -hmm. for all parts of practice so that players understand right. what the coach expects. Because for, for the most part, they'll try to do what we want them to do, what they, what they think that we expect for them to do. Right, right. And Coach Newland and I have talked about that, about the importance of communication and setting goals and clear expectations and now how you're bringing the uh, behavioral approaches into that is really kind of making a nice mixture i think for our coaches what i want to follow up with and maybe uh, conclude on is how do you see your use of behavioral uh, um, psychology pr principles helping athletes not just at the time when you have them to perform on the field, but in life in general? And do you have any examples of where you know that you've made that positive impact for a person and it's translated not to just success on the field, but success in life? Is, is there a correlation there? Oh, I think so, but I'll let Mike go first. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, coach. I, I think, um, you know, over the years, the comment that I've heard, and it's not only in life, right? It's, it's as a father, right? Yeah. I, you know, a lot of my former guys now are getting married and having children and coaching, you know, they're younger and, and it's kind of fun to watch, you know, just to see their mannerisms and, and how they approach, approach it. Um, you know, the one thing that I'm proud of is how I coached my children by allowing other people to coach them, by allowing other people's influence in their lives. Not just that, just mine. Mm -hmm. um, them understanding that the most important thing is to compete every single day, right. you know, and that's that's what I think carries over, you know, whether that's in business, um, whether that's in a marriage, mm -hmm. whether that's you know, you know, with your own children, that to learn to com compete, and I learned at a young age with my parents, especially my father about passion, having a passion for people, a passion for life. And I think that is, if you model that, um, that's something that kind of carries over. Now, it may take a player one year, five years, 30 years, 50 years, as we heard today, right, to, to be able to identify maybe something that helped them along the way. Um, but it is why we coach. It's the gratifying part of understanding, okay, the lessons that you learned, the behavioral lessons that you learned. You're not going to be late today. Like, you're just not going to be late. And then how that carries over, you know, for them into life and that discipline is is something I'm still learning, right? Because I so right now I'm getting into the, the realm of, of some of those guys, especially my old high school players, of just full families and, you know, those interactions and seeing little people run around. And I get more excited to see them as a dad, you know, than than anything else and, and how they treat them and, you know, me being able to, you know, be there for them because it's not always great, right? So um, he's probably better suited to answer that than me. So. Well, uh, Mike comes from a, a big family. He, he has a big family. And family's always been a, a theme in the development of his relationships with the players on his team and their their parents, their grandparents, the people that come and watch the young men play. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a strong theme. And it was a theme for the Purple Raiders football over the years, faith family football. Uh, coach, my sister's getting married this fall on a Saturday. My mom and her want me to go. Sure, go. Right. Well, that's an opportunity for the guy behind you to get out on the field shine. So we approached it positively. Yeah, you can't miss that. Uh, now, if their brother planned a wedding, I have some questions about why he would <laughs> be so insensitive. But, uh, but participating in a, in a sport uh, with self-disciplined leaders uh, helps you learn self-discipline so that interaction with the leadership of the senior leadership on the team, junior, senior, upper class leadership, or the coaches is not required. You demonstrate that I don't need anybody to teach me how to practice hard. I mean, you, you want to accomplish that goal on your way up to be a starting athlete. And you, you and Mike said you have to fit into the culture 
that's been established. And if it's a positive culture, then you're fitting into a positive group. And when you leave us, I think these these young guys and young women will want to help create positive cultures in the group of people that they work with so they can enjoy the process of trying to be successful at work and have have some fun. Uh, we, I mean, we don't always talk about it. We, we've got onto the topic of national championships a couple of times, but that's not really what we talk about very often uh, during the, the seasons of football or basketball or track or baseball or whatever here. You know, uh, we, we, we talk, talk about, about the, the process, process that we go through, through daily and weekly, and which lead to contests and travel and uh, uh, having some fun when we travel. And when we're together in a motel overnight, still concentrating on the football game, but having some fun, enjoying it, getting to know each other a little bit better. So I think Mike uh, embodied, as soon as he got started, everything that, that I thought about uh, family and, and strengthened it. So now young coaches coming into Mount Union, they have him as a role model uh, when they come to a contest. Seeing, I, I, I sent him a note this week. You know, he had a tough loss Saturday. But watching the game, I saw his uncle on one end of the bench and his father on the other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you heard the Toby Keith song that he wrote for Clint Eastwood? It has a line. It's about, he has Toby Keith. Ask Clint Eastwood, mm-hmm. uh, you know, at your age, how is it that you're still making movies? He said, I tried to get up and go outside and do something productive each day. And there's a line in the song, mm-hmm. get up and go outside. Right. And here is his uncle and his father getting up and going outside as a member of his family in the process of playing these basketball games. And my wife sat there and watched and I said, I don't know how this game's going to turn out, but I'm having fun seeing Mike's uncle and father, and I know his parents, his mom's in the stands with him. So um, there's a part of the process of trying to be successful that brings people really close together. And the more you do that as a group, uh, the more the more you have the opportunity to be successful. And uh, I'll make that my last thought today. All right. Well, Coach Fulon, Coach Karras, I really appreciate the time, the opportunity to get to have this discussion with you, to learn from two great coaching minds. Uh, Thank you for your insights. The real life examples that you provided our listeners are just a really unique opportunity for not only coaches that are in our coaching program here at Mount Union, but anyone that is able to catch this. So I appreciate your time and expertise and I hope that we can continue this conversation at another time and maybe think about an opportunity for, for, for another podcast. Thank you for being here today.